seems out of control. But that has to do with anything. This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with Forged Irish Stout Empire Fight Store and FreeBets.com. Always a pleasure, Mr. Samuel Jones. How are we, sir? I'm all right. So I was about to call you Steve Parsons. Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? How are you? are in Dubai at the moment, aren't you? That's my cousin, Steve Parsons. Yes, I am. I'm I'm, I'm living the dream. I, I've not really taken in the rays as much as I should, but uh, enjoying myself. Taking in the rays. You definitely don't tan either. You have to put pseudocrem uh, on instead of some cream. A little bit. Like I will come back and my mum will definitely mug me off. Like, how can you go and be in a hot place and, and not come back tan? But we've got time. Also, I, I'm actually in an office speaking to you doing my job, so I'm not really enjoying it. I am enjoying it, but... You get my point. Okay. So you've reluctantly reached out to me 50 times to, can we just do a bit? And then you I just, don't, and then and now you're on holiday. You're like, I don't really want to be doing this. Like, I, wow. Oh, wow. Your ego, wow. Your ego wow. is wow. out of Here control. we go. Here we go. It's 2024, 2024, new year, new me, little bit less of an ego. And it's now just through the fucking roof. You know what it is? Yeah. So for the viewers watching, a bit of context. Sam's all lovely. We had a little FaceTime last night. Having no, a... I, I... This is true. This is true. Don't try and deny it. Let me explain. You tried to meet me. You... No, lies. You messaged me yesterday saying, do you want to do a bit? Yeah, yesterday. Couldn't do a bit. So I was a bit busy. And even today, very busy today. And I've literally given you this. And now you're like, you're moaning about doing it. Not moaning. Where, where have you got this moaning stuff from? Anyway, you oh, FaceTime no. me. You're very nice. I've said to you before the recording, I bet you act up when the recording's on. And that you have. Anyway, why, just quickly, before we start, does it say so, Zoom user rather than Sam's iPhone? No idea. Okay. Is this the normal thing that you speak to me on? Or is it a laptop? Or you seem a bit it's clearer than usual. usual. And more clearer than usual. Yeah, like your picture. Okay. Who knows? Maybe your Wi-Fi is better this time because it's shocking in Siren Sester, isn't it? It's not actually, to be fair, mate. I think it's you usually. It it definitely isn't. But right, go on, Parsons. Go on. Let's, Let's jump into it. On. Where are we at with Josh Taylor and Jack Catrell? And I've seen a post that says. Um, the Hitchens fight, which is an eliminator, has been yeah. postponed. Uh, well, the the purse bids have been postponed because there's hopeful of an agreement. Like, what's going on here? Are you, are you explain to me what's happening? Jack's been, Jack's been ordered to um, to fight Richard Hitchens for the, the IBF title, right? I'm not sure Richard Hitchens wants to fight Jack. So apparently, he doesn't want to do the rehydrate. But ultimately, the Josh Taylor and Jack Catchell fight is in discussions one thing is for certain top rank want the fight josh's lawyer wants to fight jack catchell wants to fight eddie hearn wants to fight the only person i genuinely believe doesn't want the fight is josh taylor which is fine if he doesn't want to fight jack it, it is what it is at the end of the day he can fight steve claggett for a, a fifth of the money he'll get to fight jack is what it is is that or you, you can't just finish that. You, what, what, what do you want me to tell you? That they're in discussions. We're in discussions for the fight, right? We've agreed our side. So We've agreed our... Off, so let's do, do a bit of a timeline. So the first offer was made. Josh obviously yeah. quite vocally. The second offer was made. We declined again. Hear much. Okay, declined again. We now heard a third offer is made. Is that where we're at now? Uh, yeah, we've, we've agreed. We've agreed. Out, Jack Catchell has agreed his side of a deal to fight Josh Taylor. It's over to Josh. Josh wants to fight. The fight's there. Now, everybody that's saying, oh, God, this fight. Jack Catchell, and I'll say this for the billionth time, gets stopped every single day of his life to say, when are you fighting Josh Taylor? He's bored of it. And I'm sure Josh is bored of it as well. So it needs put into bed. It needs put into bed. So... Let's um let, let let's do it. But ultimately, I like what I just said, top rank want the fight. Josh's advisor, lawyer, wants the fight. Everybody wants the fight. It's over to Josh Taylor. 
what sort of time frame are we looking at in terms of like? It, the it's got to get done in the next. In, it's got to get done in the next week or so. I don't really like giving time frames because it doesn't. It's, it basically it needs getting sorted pretty soon. Do you think gut feeling that we see this fight, and if so, when and where? The um, I don't. I, I'm not sure where because that's not been agreed yet. But we've we've uh, we've uh, we've agreed our side to a deal to fight Josh Taylor next. So do I think the fight's going to happen? Literally, all depends on Josh Taylor. I don't personally believe he wants the fight. That's just what I genuinely believe. I don't believe he said... Because in every interview he mentions he wants to fight Lopez again. He wants to become world champion at 147. But then he's calling out Devin Haney, the 140 champion. Seems a bit of a confused person. But mentions Jack Catchell always, but at the very end of any interview. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'll fight Jack Catchell. Just... If he comes out and says, I don't want to fight Jack Catchell, no, no problem. We all can we can all move on. But don't kid people into saying that, oh, it's to do with this. Like, like because the third offer, he can't even say he's been lowballed anymore. So this, all the excuses have gone out the out the window now. Like it's, it's not like, oh, I want to become this. I want to do you've said that you 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 deserve pain well, which I agree, you do deserve getting pain well, but realistic, because you're coming off two defeats. So ultimately, the fight's there. If Josh Taylor wants to correct something that he knows needs correcting, same way Jack does, to move on, it's there. What needs to happen within the next week? And do you think... Josh Taylor needs to agree to the fight. Simple. It's, honestly, it's, that it's, is... The, the ball is in his court and that is all that needs to Jack be done. Jack Catchell, Parsons, I'll say this again, Jack Catchell has agreed to his side of a deal to fight Josh Taylor next. So it's over to Josh. Okay, gut feeling. If I said to you, does this fight happen in the first six months of twenty twenty four? What are you going to say? I don't think the fight will ever happen. Oh. I mean, if if I'm really honest, I mean, I'm hoping it does because it's the fight to make, and it's all this like cryptic speaking. Oh, Jack needs him, or Josh needs to write this wrong. They both need each other for this fight. It's the bottom line. It is Josh Taylor's biggest fight, sadly for Josh, and it's Jack's biggest fight. Fight needs to happen. The British public want to see it. The world wants to see it. We're ready to go. We've agreed. We've complied to everything. We've agreed to absolutely everything. Balls in his court, Parsons. And that's like that's the that is that is literally the 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 the, the top and bottom of it. All right, let's talk then the rest of your stable. Uh, I know we've done a little recap on 2023, but a, a lot of the young charges having a, a very successful year. We see Cameron Vong putting a couple of prospect of the year lists, which is always uh, good to see off the back of 2023. Moving forward now, we know he's the co-main event for that Newcastle next gen. Um, and then just sort of a run through with the rest of the guys. Any Anything that you're working on that you're able to hint to us? I mean, it looks, looks to be a, a good year for you. Yeah, look, listen, we've got Cameron in that in 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 a in a big step up fight, you know, co-main event. The second time he's co-main event at a show in his fourth fight, which is I can't remember too many kids doing that. Um he loves the pressure though, Cameron. He really does. I know just saying that, but he absolutely when lights and cameras on him, he comes alive, which is what I believe stands him out to, to a lot of people. I think he's a real special talent. So yeah, big year for Cameron, more activity. Um Khalil Majid, he's going to be, uh, his fight news is going to be announced very soon. Um, big year for him. He's going to really kick on after a big performance against Tom Farrell. Got Muhammad Ali, who's um, four, I think he's three or four and oh. I think he's four and oh. Um, he's going to really crack on this year as well. Continuous progression. He's only a baby, so it's ba literally baby steps with him. Uh, Dan Toward, may have two fights in three weeks uh, in December. Um, so re, re, he, he literally main evented on his first fight in, on Channel Five. So it was a it was a cracking start for Dan. He stopped the stopped a very tough opponent, and then he put on a clinic in his in his next fight uh, in his next performance of a week or so later. Uh, Mark Dickinson, huge news coming for Mark Dickinson. Uh, is yeah, I know you know what it is. I think everybody kind of knows what it is, but it's not for me to to to, to announce. I'm sure it's going to be announced very shortly, but um, it's gonna it's gonna be like people are gonna go, not not think it's not what people think it is. People are gonna go, wow, that's big. So um, yeah, so we 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 uh, 
it's a huge, huge, it's a huge uh, opportunity for Mark Dickinson in his very young career. But we have full belief in uh, in Mark that he's going to do the business. Um, What's that? I know. I've missed... Hey, what was that that you just did? Just like, just did my hat. Uh, why, is, <laughs> why, why are you weird for? I'm not. I just asked because you just were random mid sentence. Don't give it the big one now because you've got a bit no, of hair coming out the, the top one. of your head. You've got. You've given it the big one. That that's already been done. Right. Okay. Anthony Joshua, Francis and Garnu. It seems. You didn't even let me run through Hamza Udin as well. But yeah, oh. his debut is going to be soon as well. No, it's all right. We can, okay, we can move on. No problem, Parsons. No, no, no worries. I might even have. I might even have a couple of signings coming as well. Yeah, but you're not going to tell me about them. All right then, move on then. Anthony Joshua. Anthony yeah. Joshua. Now you skipped. Anthony Joshua. Go on. Yeah, but yeah, but, uh, but uh, Anthony Joshua. Let's go to let's go straight into AJ. I like talking about AJ. We will come back to this at the end. Anthony Joshua, Francis Ngannou. Looks like it will be the next fight. Um, yeah, the perfect Saudi fight. Arabians, Saudi Arabians want it. I know you tweeted about perfect it. fight. It makes sense. You can fight Hergovic later in the year when the belts fragment. Obviously, it's a big. There's no belt. other. There's no other big. Well, there is lots of big fights. Anthony Joshua was fantastic in that last performance, and any point. And as I saw a few like miserable tweets say, "Oh, that's what he should have done." No, a lot of people were saying Anthony Joshua was going to get dicked in that fight. So it's you have got to give him credit. He literally looked like. His former self, welcome back, kind of thing. He was he was fantastic in that fight, and uh, in that form, he can be any heavyweight, in my opinion. So he's Tyson Fury. Obviously, had his struggles against Ngannou, um, but he pipped him on the cards. But he had his struggles against him. So Anthony Joshua's next fight, it's a perfect fight for him. It's absolutely massive. Um, Absolutely massive fight. And while he's waiting for his World Heavyweight title shot, which I'm sure will be a vacant world title against Hergovic, because um, Tyson Fury and Usyk are contracted to two fights. So the belts will fragment after the undisputed fight, I, I believe, will, will happen. And AJ will box Hergovic for the vacant IBF strap. In the meantime, keep busy. Keep the momentum. March the 9th, massive fight against uh, Ungarno. Really looking forward to it. How does that go? And... Obviously, Francis, I think AJ, AJ stops him within six. Francis and Garnu, the performance we saw against Tyson Fury obviously showed he was a much more superior boxer than a lot of us suspected. But also, we can take away from it as much as Tyson Fury doesn't give sort of facts to, probably wasn't the real Tyson in there. So, what level really is in Garnu like? I still listen. I, I like Ungana, really like him, but he, I don't believe he wins <sighs> English title, something like that. I, me personally, I think Anthony Joshua will do a right job on Ungana. That's just what I, honestly what what I believe. I really like Francis Ungana. I'm so happy he's getting paid loads of money to to, to have these contests because he deserves it. Nobody probably deserves it more than Francis, but I do think AJ will. Will knock him spark out. Deontay Wilder came out after the fight. I think it was on Christmas Day, actually. And yeah, uh, obviously there was so much talk in the build-up about AJ's mental state, and then people, uh, Eddie included, came back and was like, "Wilder, this guy's being open about doing psychedelics." Since then, he said that he didn't have his sort of old side in him. That sort of tenacity. Call being past you. It's called being past your best. Yeah, and then he said that AJ was happy that he lost and he didn't mention it until the end. I mean, it's all a bit bizarre, isn't it? I, I, honestly, I really like... Everybody loves watching Deontay Wilder when he's at his violent best. Like, it's almost like watching it behind the pillow because it's just... He's so entertaining. He was absolutely awful against Parker. He was awful. But... Massive credit to Joe Parker. He fought fire with fire in there, but he, Joseph Parker looks strong. Like I said before the fight, again, I I, I put a um, I put a bet on. I was just um, to, yeah, yeah, I put a bet on that that Parker was winning because I just had a feeling he was just because you when you put it into context, Parker better feet, 
yeah, physically stronger. Not a bigger puncher, but he's a physically stronger man. Much heavier, better head movement, but better everything than Deontay Wilder. Just not a bigger puncher. And I just thought, he's going to win this fight. He's going to win this fight. And he, and not only did he win it, he it was just incredibly one-sided. It was it was a, genuinely it was an easier fight than Jack Massey was for Parker. That's just the bottom. That's just the bottom line. Um, and unfortunately for Wilder, with his resume showing that his biggest and best win is Luis Ortiz at the age ripe old age of sixty-five. It doesn't really look good for his for his CV. No, it doesn't though, does it? It doesn't look I'm, I'm saying Tom oh, cheat there. Like oh, I get I get what you mean though, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just it, it doesn't really look good. And like you look now, if he doesn't really box again, who's he actually be? Is he the biggest puncher of all time? Probably. Is he one of the most exciting fighters we've seen for, for decades in the heavyweight division? Yeah, all of that. But who has he actually beaten? I always said, and I got loads of stick for it, Anthony Joshua would d ruin Wilder. Mm. But then Wilder does have that, possess that power to knock anybody out. Do you know what I mean? But I always thought AJ would have the better of him. Imagine if he boxed AJ that night. Oh, my God. Big disaster. Tyson Fury, on the topic, <clears throat> he started his camp really early. Uh, well, not really early, but he's come out to Riyadh really early. Uh, he's not. He's not. He's back. He's back in. He, he he posted a video yesterday of him training back in Morecambe. So no, I, he, I, 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 he's, he's set up in camp in Riyadh. So he, well, he's playing games then because he's posting videos. If you look at his Instagram today, he's, he's now, in. I'm I'm pretty sure. I don't want to say I know for a fact, but from certain. You look at your, you look at your phone and look at his Instagram story. He's that saying good run today this morning with the team. In the fields, have a look. Yeah, I'm a bit bit baffled now. Yeah, so I think he's just playing his playing his games. But he did go into Saudi, so they say. No, definitely. Well, he's come back then, or he's or he's literally listen. Tyson's being Tyson, isn't he? He's probably just keeping people guessing. Are we convinced that he's in, even in Morecambe? He may have posted that video today, but that no. could also be my games. I mean, he's not in a, a windy field in Saudi Arabia, is he? No, Charles but that could, mate, that video could be from like a week or so ago. Yeah, that's what I'm just saying to you. It's probably Tyson being Tyson. Um, if you're going to ask me who I think is going to win, by the way, I do think Tyson Fury is going to beat Usyk, yeah. A significantly improved one based off the last performance. Because he... I just genuinely think he didn't train a single day for that fight. I think he just went through the motions, probably did a few pad sessions, but just thought, this guy's not going to get... Nit he just didn't... He wasn't there. He wasn't with it in that performance. And I do think Tyson knows the pressure is on him. And he's, he's, his reputation's on the line a little bit here because he's coming off a very, very strange performance against Ungarno. So... But I do think Tyson's going to do the business. I, I really do. And then it's setting up for the biggest fight of all time against Anthony Joshua, which is what we all deserve. Who wins that? You just base it on current form. Ask me, ask me this question after Tyson Fury fights Usyk. Will you give an honest answer? Like, are you, do you feel after... that you're in a position where you're able to come out and say the winner of that fight? Well, yeah, absolutely. Cool. But, but ask me after ask me after the Usyk fight, and I'll give you a full breakdown. Of, I'm not bothered about telling you who think who I think win fights. When have I ever like cared about that? Oh, I don't. I'm not, I'm not worried about or getting a prediction wrong. I've got loads of good predictions right. I think Callum Smith's going to knock out Better Bio, but could be wrong. Oh, got a prediction wrong. I must not know what I'm talking about. No, because people just sit down, they break down a fight, and go, "This is how." Better be if wins the fight. This is how I think Callum Smith can win, can win the fight. No, say who you think's going to win, because there's too many pussies that don't say it because they're worried about get they're worried about getting a prediction wrong. I'm not bothered about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you my smoke today. Uh, no, it's not smoke. I'm just so saying what I think. Smoke today, but no, but people are like just like be, be real. Just give your honest your, give your honest opinion. I'm going to ask you to keep that same energy 
Uh, Connor Ben is fighting Peter Dobson next. Connor Ben by knockout. <laughs> No, um, the op- <laughs> the opponent has faced a little bit of criticism. I spoke to Frank Smith yesterday, and, and I get the reasons by the time that the Eubank fight had fallen through, realistically, as much as perhaps Connor would have wanted to face one of the best. You, you make the sort of corporate decision behind the scenes. As Who's to- available? Yeah. Who, who's available right now, right? That day. He wanted to fight Barrios. I know that for a fact. Barrios is unavailable. He wanted to face uh, um, Boots Ennis, not available on that day. Conor Ben had a date given to him by the, the zone, right? Who's available for that for that date? Chris Eubank didn't want to, to do the fight now. But again, they'll probably revisit that fight afterwards because that kind of needs put into bed as well. That's one of those fights that kind of needs put into bed. Um, there's the Brook fight there. But yeah, listen, he's fighting an undefeated opponent, um, which everyone will be tuning into because Conor Ben, no matter what anyone says about him, he's must-watch television, isn't he? So let's uh, look forward to that. I think it's going to be held in UK prime time. They're going to do the show in the afternoon so the UK viewers can watch it in their time, which I think is brilliant. Johnny Fisher's on that card. Really looking forward to see Johnny. It's where it all began for Johnny, by the way. Um, when Joe, just give people, and I, I know this story's been out before, but just to reiterate it, when Joe was training for Dubois the first time before it got called off with COVID, we flew Johnny out to Vegas. And this is when Johnny was a full-time uni student, just finishing off his uh, his, his dissertation. He was he was just finishing it off. Um, and he came out um, while he was, and he was studying for his degree while he was in Vegas. That's the truth. So Johnny was sparring uh, Johnny. And then when Johnny sparred Joe, um, we thought, wow, he can he can actually do something, Johnny, in the in the in the in in boxing, like like he and because the the idea was never to it was it was all organic. It never like oh let's have a look at this kid. We just knew that Johnny was tough and game and strong, and uh, he turned out to be Joe's lead sparring partner, and he was smashing up some American heavyweights out there as well, and like where it's ended up now. So good things happen to good people. I don't want to credit him too much because I like giving him a stick every now and again, but. He deserves everything he gets, uh, John. He's worked incredibly hard, and I'm really, really excited to watch his uh, his American debut. Big up the Romford Bull Army. Oh, but, oh, sh- yeah, yeah, I'm just just thought I'd give it a bit of a half half epic speech there. But that was too good a moment with- to not hit with hit you with a Johnny Fisher calm down. Calm down, yeah. Just it, it is a bit of a calm down moment as well. Okay, moving on from John. Now we'll start talking about him. <laughs> Um, quite a big month for the Brits. Historically, a a bit a bit of a dry month and no month for boxing in January. But obviously, John Ryder fights Jaime Munguia. We have Callum Smith, like you mentioned, against Baturbiev. Tasha Jonas against Michaela Mayer. Ahara Davies. I forgot that fight was happening. Yeah. Good fight. Ahara Davies has his um, US debut in Vegas this week against Barrios. It's, it's quite an exciting time for British boxing in, in January of all months. Yeah, it's yeah. Listen, you've got the Jaime Munguia fight. It's an interesting one. I think uh, that's a really, really close fight. I actually don't know who's going to win that fight. I will tell you how. I know. Um, well, I mean, I'm I'm going on record and saying that John Ryder's winning that. Okay, well, I literally, I won't be shocked if either be either. It's a great fight. So looking forward to that. I think Callum Smith's going to not better be about. I do. I think it's going to happen. Quote me saying it's no problem. Oh, Sam might get it wrong. I think Callum Smith is going to knock face plant him. I think he's going to chin him proper. So, and then who we got after that in the in the uh, for the Brits? Ahara Davis. I think Ahara Davis is going to beat Barroso. Tough Natasha fight. Jonas. Natasha Jonas against Michaela Mayer. Good fight. Um, don't know who's going to win that fight. Would love to see Natasha win it, but don't know who's going to win that fight. Samuel, a couple more from me. USA Boxing have come out with a interesting... Yeah, absolute bollocks. What a load of absolute bollocks. Literally, what a load of bollocks. Like, it's... If transgenders, Charlie Parsons, want to box, right? I'm going to quickly interrupt. I just spoke about this with Gareth not too long ago, and I know we're in this new politically correct world of that, but I just can't help myself from laughing in... in, 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 in I just, don't yeah. give a shit about this politically correct world when it comes to stuff like this. If you are born a man, 
you are not you shouldn't be competing against women in any sport let alone fighting yeah if transgenders by the way transgenders and before anyone says oh he does he transphobic no absolutely not transphobic if transgenders want to box you can box each other in the undisputed transgender wbc champion of the world thing in a in your own category no problem no problem. You've got full rights to box, but box amongst yourselves, not against other women who... And, and then this one about, oh, levels. Let's test the levels. No. If you're born with your 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 shit, then you box... You, you, you will box another person that's had that. It's just... What, honestly, this world that we live in, it actually really winds me up, and I'm probably going to get a hell of a load of stick for this interview oh, but yeah well what I, to be honest with you genuinely hand on my heart don't give two flying shits what anyone thinks of what i'm saying here because i just i just believe it absolute nonsense do a transgender category and let transgenders box fellow transgenders stay well away from from fighting women that were born women piss off you know what I find so mad about it all, though? There are, like, mm. you know, like you hear about in, in Gareth gave a few examples earlier, and I don't know my 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 other, my multi-sport well enough, and certainly transgender athletes in multi-sports well enough to reference some examples. But we hear of cases, weightlifting being one, swimming. Yeah, being. remember that big you New Zealand that, weight, that big New yeah, Zealand weightlifting, I breaking, don't know. breaking I don't records. Know. You, you talk about this transgender... You know they can they can fight each other and stuff, but I don't know of any transgender people that even want to. But who's asked for this? What trans people have? And I'm I, I honestly, and it makes you worry about the fact that is there already transgenders boxing in the female category? Do you understand what I mean? Like, like, like it makes you worry, though, doesn't it? Makes you worry. I think all we all I know... probably guess that there's there's not transgenders fighting. In the or, okay, well, all I'm saying is is the, in the answer to your question, I don't want to keep on this subject because I'll say something that gets me into trouble. But no, absolutely fucking not. If transgenders want to box, fantastic, brilliant, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Box your fucking selves, please, and let's just not the world not go fucking crazy like it already is. But yeah, let's move swiftly on because I'll get into more. I'll get into trouble. Wood Warrington uh, 2, May 18th yeah. at the City Ground. And Taylor Cameron, we believe Matram, are in talks with the government, uh, the Irish government, to uh, try and get that at Croke Park. We know that really? they would like it in the UK, but financially and everything, we sort of get... Yeah, the fight's not happening that. in the UK. The fight's never happening in the UK. It's not big enough over here. Over there, it's a monster. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. Hope the fight happens. It's 1-1, one, one, so it's rightfully... It, there needs to be a winner of that. So good luck to, to both girls. Absolutely amazing two fights as well. Two great spectacles. The Irish fans are unbelievable, by the way. Some of the best fans in the world. Um, Wood Warrington, horrible football ground is the city ground, but Lee Wood does actually deserve it. Um, he does really deserve his, his moment there to to walk out in front of his uh, his fans on the in the uh, ugh, the city ground. <laughs> um, but yeah. It'll be fantastic, won't it? The Leeds fans are probably going to be put in the away end and they'll probably do it as a as the way that they'd set it up as a football match would. So, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Wood against Warrington too. Hamza Uden and more signings. Yeah, a couple more signings, a couple of signings there potentially on the way. Some really, really It's going to be really big. And, uh, yeah, Hamza Uddin will make his debut uh, early spring. A little bit hypocritical from you because when you tried to give it lemon... 15 minutes ago, I said... Give it lemon. Honestly, oh, Parsons as well. Do you know why, why you're saying... Do you know why you're saying... No, shut up, Do you know why you're saying... No, 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 no. Do you know why you're sat there doing this in your... So I'm going to go Reverse this. Reverse it. Reverse it. Reverse it. Reverse it. Reverse it to me now. Do not interrupt me, right? You said... I said to you, I said... There are new signings, but you're not going to tell me who they are. And you went, yeah, I would have. So now I've asked you, and you're, you're not, you're not you telling me. You don't deserve me. to, man. But also, you're signing. sat there. Honestly, God, spin this camera around now so that people can see what you're actually doing. You sat there like Dr. Evil in a, in a oh, spinning, no, rotating I'm scene. Sat at like this. I'm like sat this. <laughs> Mate, I'm like this, like this, like a little. Honestly, like you listen with that little plant next to you as well. Like you're ready, like your Lord Sugar, ready to tell someone to get fired. 
Listen, I've had enough for you. For <laughs> it's not my office. Sam Jones, always a pleasure. Thank you for speaking to us at Boxing Social. Yeah. Genuinely, always lovely to catch up. We'll speak soon. Take care, mate. See you in a bit. We need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live.